It's time to double up. That's what we decided to do today. <laughs> double up. Double team. Double team. It's here at KFC Radio times two bears. There's four of us. Let's go. <laughs> Is four people a gangbang? 100%. <laughs> This episode of Two Bears, One Cave is sponsored by Kettle and Fire Bone Broth, made with all organic ingredients and bones from 100% grass-fed cows and free-range chickens. Kettle and Fire is available at almost any grocery store in the country. They have the cleanest and highest quality bone broth on the market, and it's great for fasting support. For a limited time, you can save 25% off your entire order when you go to kettleandfire.com bears and use the code bears at checkout. That's kettleandfire.com slash bears with code bears at checkout for 25% off your entire order. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, it's a hardcore no. train. Mm -hmm. It's a force. Well, the train is if you, the train foursome. is yeah. like you have to do it in a train. You know what I mean? Like yeah. one after another. That's Hold what makes on. it a train. Yeah, it's a train. Hold on. You're standing behind a dude hard? Yeah. Going yeah. like, I'm next? And not only that, <laughs> you're stroking your dick. Yeah. So like You could be like smacking your dick on her foot if you want. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. If you've been on, on the train, <laughs> you speak from knowledge. <laughs> I don't know. Just on top of my head. <laughs> right. That's something someone would do. Have you, been <laughs> Have you been in a train? No. No, no, no. Right, fuck right. no. I've seen him, though. Yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah, I yeah. could. I don't think I could. No. Like. No. Have you done threesomes, foursomes? No. No. There was I've had sex me and me and a buddy one time were like no we, it didn't end up happening but it was there was a girl who was like she's like I want you two to DP me and we were like fuck yes and we were probably like twenty and we spent the entire summer trying to get her to come back to Newport we're like Shit. we'll pay whatever come on down and she never came back <laughs> wait DP that's dick input two dicks in her pussy no. double penetration Jesus Bro, what Christ. dude wait what is just that? double it's penetration a, it's, it's a one in the butt one in the pussy. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's but you a, know the thing is, is that the, that skin between the two is really thin, so you really I, feel the other guy's dick. Yeah, in my, you're experience. slapping balls. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. What if yeah. that's your thing? All of a sudden, you feel his dick rubbing your dick. Yeah, and you're like, ah, oh, that's the thing. That's I love. the move. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. No, that would be the worst thing imaginable. Imagine that. Like, well, this is what I got to do now. You just accept that that's who you are, you know? <laughs> and hopefully Damn. your friends understand. <laughs> that's why I don't try heroin. What, Let, what's the best drug you ever had? I did Dilaudid. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was when I fell off a uh, waterfall, and I, I said, I'm going to write a poem as you give it to me, because that's, that's what you do. And so Wait, I, what? Because... I, 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 he was thinking you. of the great songwriters. Yeah, you know? I'm like Kurt Cobain. Oh, wrote a oh bunch I see. Of great I see. Songs. I gotta, I gotta, I'm gonna I see if I can bang out a fucking <laughs> one hit wonder, fucking make my million, and then tap out mm -hmm. in and out, baby, like a bank robbery. Yeah, like the town. Yeah. And so, <laughs> my poem was, "Oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, this feels so good. My face is hot. My face is hot." <laughs> Is so awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's a good song. It, it's, 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 you know what? That would yeah. be a hit on TikTok these days. It would go viral for that shit. If the video existed, it would have a hundred million oh, views. Yeah. Yeah. Bert, like laying in a waterfall, yeah. like, broken back on. Oh, oh fuck. fuck. I'm on heroin. Fuck. He saw me get dilated. That was the best. Yeah. The yeah. problem with me is I have to match your story with one of my stories. Yeah. <laughs> There's a dude who fell off a cliff and he was in a wheelchair. And he was telling me a story, and I go, I fell off a waterfall one time. And he was like, Did you get paralyzed? And I was like, Nope. nope. <laughs> he was like, Then I don't think your story yeah. beats mine. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you still probably were like, Yeah, but it really hurt. Like, you know. I was like, You haven't heard my struggle of getting out of that gravy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think I think last time when you guys were on the show, we were talking about Delotted. That's and right. That's right. Oh, we I just did your show. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah There's yeah. a lot of drinking that week. Yeah, a lot. Speaking well, of that... which, let's find that dog that pissed in my mouth last night and have a little bit of its hair. Okay. Nah. <laughs> sure. I could have I a fucking. Cocktail. You never know with Bird. It might be a, <laughs> might be a true story. <laughs> yeah. Remember? Oh, because yeah. All right. Let's let's really let's really go viral. And I, I, says, I was told by a friend that I don't prepare for podcasts. A uh, friend? <laughs> a friend of yours? <laughs> yeah. A friend who might have some podcasting experience? And so uh, let's find out. You, last night was your first night meeting Joe Rogan. Yeah. Yes. I would like yeah. first impressions because Tom and I know him very well. Yep. And, and I, use this, I use this analogy a lot. He's a little bit like a great white oh. shark. Like when you see him and you're like, oh, fuck, that's Rogan. Like everyone Big does time. it. Yes. Everyone, yes, yes, Big yes, time. yes. Yeah. And so I... I'm curious to see your insights of hanging out. You guys hung out with him last yeah. night. First of all, uh, just a great dude, like a very, very gracious and humble, nice guy. But 
I mean, within five minutes, he's talking about elk meat <laughs> and and you know uh, uh, surgery to be able to run an ultra marathon and uh, uh, red light collagen treatment for your skin. And I was like, this motherfucker's. That's what he talks about. Yeah, he's the like, real deal. Like, and not that I ever thought it was a shtick or anything that he was like putting on for the yeah, show, yeah, yeah, but yeah, knowing, yeah. I'll take one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pour it out. Yeah. We'll do a little. You know, you know, he cleaned his life up like I did, <laughs> but the old Johnny was a fucking mess. Was a fucking. I, I remember, mess. dude. I always said like, like you know, the machine. We all know it. I was like. I know a guy who can go toe to toe with pretty much anybody. Yeah. <laughs> you have, you have, you have. I, I, his energy is infectious. Rogan, yeah, uh, yeah. no, no, no. Oh, okay. his, his, oh, okay. yeah. No, Rogan's energy is really infectious. You know, it's fun to watch. I, I really love bringing people to introduce him to him. Yeah, it's, it's well, it's, it's nice to have you like. It, it would be a weird situation if I didn't have you to introduce. You know what I mean? I would yeah. never want to just roll up and hey, I'm a fan. So getting like you know a little in on that was I think made a difference. But the fact that he was so genuine, it was like he whether he's on the mic and making money talking about this or doing it for free, he talks about it's, that shit. It's the life he lives, dude. Yeah. He's just talking about Which the makes life it he all lives. The more, I'm like he is just he's one life. He, yeah. All the money, all the friends, all the opportunities, all the fun. And it's not like he has to go to work and be like, all right, today I got to talk about MMA. There's, like, there's, he likes let, it. Let's, let's it. trash him a little bit because <laughs> you can do there, are parts of, there are parts of him that are exhausting. Like when he... Oh, oh fucking Tommy! Oh. Jesus. Napkin? <laughs> like when he, when, he, when he tells you to stop working and he goes, you need to slow down. And you realize he works at a faster clip than anyone. Yeah. yeah. He works nonstop. He wakes up at six in the morning, is in the sauna, in the polar plunge, stretching, he stretching. Was, he was saying that. He was like, you know, sometimes you can take on too much. And I was like, bro, you take on yeah. everything. He takes on everything. everything. He takes on everything. But that's he where it's also everything. like, oh, don't get it twisted. Like, I'm better at you than this. So, like, you know, you should slow down. I'm yeah. good. You know? Yeah. yeah he, you. I think his thing mainly with me has always been my health. Yeah. Because he looks, I, it must be exhausting to look at me and go, you're like in your him and all you care about is longevity and health. And go, you're just dying. Yeah. I, I've seen it with other people where you go, where you see it now. You can see it now when people are dying, and you go, oh, that doesn't. That's not a good look. That's yeah, not what yeah. you want. Dying, not, yeah. But how happy you were you last night to tell them that you had a good, clean bill of health. Fucking that was great. You were like, I've been waiting to fucking tell you this. I'm perfect. He's, and and Joe really was. He was like, hmm, okay, all right. Like, <laughs> God damn it. He knows. He Doctors knows. Say so. He know? knows that Bert's an anomaly, though. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's always, he's I mean, always he's, like, there's something about that he guy. He did say. He says yeah. it in a very genuine. He goes. And he really is better than he should be. I don't know how. Cheers, Cheers boys. Gentlemen. Congratulations Cheers. to what sounds Cheers. like the most successful liquor drop of all time. <laughs> Cheers, me. brother. Okay. Really, um, though, congratulations. This is awesome. It is a fucking delicious vodka. It's a good vodka. It's a good vodka. No, what did you think of Rogan? I did so Rogan because you because you did a little bit of like you swam back into the cage a couple times. Hey, well, hey, <laughs> you got out of the cage with the great white, and you were like, "I want to see how close I can get to it." Yeah. And you, you ponied up next to yeah, him, yeah. and you go, you swam out of the back into the cage, and I go, "Where are you going?" And you're like, "Ah." <laughs> well, it was so. So first of all, like the we had a buddy who told us he's like, "I was just about to leave, and I saw Rogan coming, so I came back in." So I was aware Rogan was in the building, and. I'm not not a Rogan fan, but I'm not. I don't listen to the podcast, so sure. I'm, not, I'm not a super fan either. So, but like being in the building with him, you immediately become a super fan. Right. Like, I was instantly like, "Where is he? Where is he? Where is he?" Yeah, My yeah. eyes were yeah. darting like the whole time. And I finally saw Kevin. I was, I was like, "Wait, Kevin! Wait, that's Joe Rogan next to him." And our producers, Pavs and Jackie, were like, "Go, go, go! Talk to him." And I was like, "No, I'm not gonna do that. Like that'd be crazy to just go interrupt Tom, Bert, Kevin. Like, I'm not gonna do that." And then we kept being like, "Yeah, let's not go over. That's crazy." And then we just kept inching and inching. And like, yeah, like yeah. five minutes later, we're like, why are we close? Does he have a wake? Like, what is pulling us into him? Yeah. The Rogan then, gravity. It was like hot girl energy. You're yeah. Like, I wanted to talk to her. Like, <laughs> like, like, I blinked. I was like, I'm standing next to him. What the fuck? How'd this happen? Oh, hey, how are you? <laughs> but then when, when I finally got there, the what he was talking about was, it, I was like, my, my mind was blown. Because right? he was just like, I could overhear a little bit him just being like, and his forearms, the, he's got big forearms. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he's uh, talking about Steve Garvey. Steve Garvey. Garvey. Yeah, yeah, Steve Garvey. Yeah. And he's like, the picture? Yeah, the yeah. picture up. He's like, look at these things. They'd punch a hole right in your head. How you doing? I'm Joe. <laughs> 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 this, is this is what Joe Rogan's talking about right yeah, now. Yeah, he's like, that guy <laughs> is You can't script it. You can't, I mean. Built to fuck you up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He goes, yeah. he's, got a, he's got a frame like an MMA guy. I told Shannon Sharp the same thing. I was like, that's Dude, crazy. Specifically. Google uh, forearms, yeah. Steve Garvey forearms, 
And there's that one picture where he's like, hey, that one all the way on the all right. Way, all, the, all the way on the right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Joey's showing us. Look yeah. at those fucking forums. Yeah. By the way, he's that's running uh, He's running for office in California, and you got my vote, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, Joe's lock screen right there. Fucking <laughs> Garvey I holding thought that I was back. like, that's, you know, it's got to be fake or whatever. You look at all those pictures. It's hairy. Yeah. He looks like the like an abominable snowman, you know? Yeah. It's a Yeti. But, I told, I, I told uh, I, when I, I met Steve Garvey, I think I told you guys this last night, and I said to him uh my 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 friend growing up his mom dated you in high school and he went who and i said her name and he went mm. you know i get mixed up with steve harvey a lot and i went i think i would remember if she dated steve harvey <laughs> <laughs> that'd be a very different story people always confusing me for steve so he didn't boy. he didn't remember though no he didn't remember her <laughs> There's, uh, but here's the thing about those guys, baseball players. Oh, buddy. So much pussy. Yeah. Well, like, you, well, you're on the road. Yeah, yeah 180 so fucking old. games. That's crazy. Games. 182? No, what's 100, 162, and you're on the yeah. road for 81 of them. So, right. You know. And he's thinking of decades of pussy. He's like, <laughs> Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, don't, like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> well, have you ever heard the Mulaney bit about Clinton? No. When he's talking about when he was a kid and his, his uh, Clinton was running for election and his what his mom had gone to college with Clinton and she was like, I want to see if he remembers me. And he's telling the story how she pushes up this little John Mulaney tour in order to get to Bill Clinton and Clinton sees her and whatever. And he goes, Hello, Shannon. And he goes, cause Clinton never forgets a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually swallows. <laughs> he doesn't forget the ones that swallow. I believe that he would remember too. Yeah. Oh yeah. He has like that he, type of charisma. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's got, sure. you know, that's why he's Clinton. He, he winks at you, shakes hands, kiss babies and, and like makes you feel like the most, uh, you know, I remember the, that, the ball. I remember that thing he used to do with my balls. <laughs> <laughs> fucking moves on to the next person you're like oh my god he remembers this episode of two bears one cave is sponsored by better help it can be easy to ignore our social battery and spread ourselves thin especially with social gatherings picking up after the winter that's right it happens to all of us what's the right amount of socializing for you how do you recharge maybe you thrive around people like myself or maybe you need some alone time like my wife leanne therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery my battery's charged when around people. I need to be around people. I got to be honest with you, Leanne's isn't. And we both are in therapy and we talked about that in therapy and we learned to give each other space to recharge. And, uh, and, and, and that isn't just me giving alone time. It's a Leanne allowing me moments to have people over. And we learned the best way to communicate is for me to ask her first. We learned this in therapy. It works for us. Therapy is awesome. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give better help a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Bears today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Bears. Naturally, our hunt for a tasty and hefty nicotine pouch has led us to Lucy Breakers, a totally unique nicotine capsule pouch, a breakthrough in nicotine tech, if you will. And each Lucy Breakers pouch contains a liquid-filled capsule. Give the capsule a little bite to break it and toss it in your lip. Why the capsules? Pouches have to be wet to work. The breaker wets the pouch for instant flavor and nicotine. Lucy Breakers comes in two strengths, four milligrams and eight milligrams. And they have so many flavors like mint, mango, apple ice, berry citrus, apple cider, and espresso. Personally, I love the ritual of breaking them open, doing a little feeling it snap between your teeth, and then letting it just sit and marinate. And they have little uh, a, a, a little pouch little door compartment on the top of the can that you can take one out if you don't have a trash can nearby, which I think is brilliant. Visit lucy.co slash bears and use promo code bears to get 20% off your first order. That's lucy.co slash bears and use promo code bears to get 20% off your first order. Lucy products are only for adults of legal age and every order is age verified. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Like, well, you know what's interesting is, uh, I, not, I mean, I'm not calling anyone out, but some guy came up to Joe and told him about a meeting he had with Joe about investing in one of Joe's companies or something. At the party? And Joe just, I watched Joe go blank. 
And the guy starts to walk away. He goes, he's a fucking liar. I've never met him. I've never <laughs> met him. And I was like, Joe's the kind of guy that remembers, he remembers who he's yeah, met yeah, and yeah. who he hasn't met. For sure. My favorite. And once again, you know I love you, John. You know I love you. John, sorry, my buddy. I always fuck his last name up. The guy, you know, no, until right now, I think you're talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know it's a tough last name, but it's not since it's sorry. <laughs> is it, is the, the, the big guy. The big dude. Yeah, is yeah, my yeah. Instagram guy. Sorry? I think it's Sessa Sorry. Sessa Sorry. Sessa Sorry? Jo, you pull him up. Ooh, 1313. Say a prayer. Is okay. that a thing? Yeah. Oh, my brain is broken. <laughs> my brain is so broken. He he's there last night, and he goes, uh, and I said, uh, Yeah, yeah. Which one is it? He's, yeah. Okay. No. No. no you had it. You had it in the. It was auto correcting for you. That's it. Nope. Instagram. Uh, anyway. He's Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. Notre, Notre Dame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Notre Dame. He played for Notre Dame. He's a fucking no, not author. Oh, Notre Dame. Yeah, yeah. That's him. That's him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So he's a big personality. He's I, lo I, I love the guy. Sarasani. Sarasani. Yeah. Sarasani. Okay. John Sarasani. He's on Instagram. Give him a follow. He's fun as fuck. I I love hanging out with him because he's, he's a big he's, energy. And he's I, and got I, your energy. He's got my energy, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and I love it. And he said. Uh, I, I said, uh, Rogan's coming by. He goes, well, I can't wait to meet him. I said, hold on, let me introduce you to him. He goes, no, I'm good. And I went, no, 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 <coughs> let me introduce you to him. Mm -hmm. And then as you watch people introduce themselves to Joe, no one does it well. No. No one does it well because the, the move is just stand there. Wait for him to say hi to you. And then, he, and then he'll be generous with his time. Yeah. But the fucking people that ear beat him, like mm -hmm. they could just go up. It's As his friend, you feel protective of his time because you're like watching some bitch just... <laughs> I watched this chick roll in last night and was like, Some bitch. <laughs> and she was like, I don't know, I don't know, aliens? And you're like, you. Yo, the uh, walls on yeah. some people, right? Like, just someone, like you said, be be very cognizant of their time. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, There's they, a weird thing of like super famous, though. You yeah, know where I mean? people just kind of lose their. their There's mind all these over stories it. now. Because, like, you get it, like, we know Joe, so you've, and we've been around, like, you you think everything's normal, and then someone spots him, and you're like, oh shit, yeah, he's super famous. Like, mm -hmm. you forget. But then, like, there's stories, like, all these Michael Jordan stories are insane of, like, how he's like, I don't give a fuck who you are to people. <laughs> 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 like, there's, have you seen the chameleon air story? No. No. Dude, he's. Chameleon Air, so is a pretty well known rapper. Yeah, is uh is at a party and like you know, some whatever event, probably like last night, and he walks around in this back room, there's like uh Derek Jeter and a couple like big time, you know, former basketball players and MJ. And so he walks up and he's like, uh, what's up? And <laughs> Said Jordan was like, fuck off. Like, I don't give a fuck you. Yeah. And then he's like, oh no, I'm a chameleon. There. He's like, I don't give a shit uh, who the fuck you are. Yeah. And so he's like, I have a jersey of yours that I got at an auction. And I would love if you sign it. And he said, Jordan was like, do you have $25,000? <laughs> and and that, that, the friends were like, no, 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 like, he's cool. Like, yeah. this is chameleon, he's cool. He's like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you have 25000 And then he's like, go get $25,000. I'll sign your shit. Otherwise, Gangster. Get the fuck out of here. Gangster. That's... But, like, also, the part of you goes, like, that's crazy. But then part of you has to think, like, yeah, but what's it really like to be anywhere and be Michael Jordan? Yeah, because yeah. that's happened to him, like, a billion <laughs> right? times from everybody. Like, so eventually you go, give me 25K. Dude, I, I was just at dinner in Miami, and I was sitting next to David Ortiz, mm -hmm. and I was like, I was like, it was actually very cool because no one was talking to him. And I was like, that's pretty sick that, like, everyone's giving Poppy his time. Yeah. And then we happened to both be in the bathroom at the same time, and in the bathroom, it was insane. It was like oh. it was like people were just waiting for him to get up from his table. Yeah, and he was he was the opposite. He was incredibly. People asked him to take selfies while he was like taking a piss. He's yeah. like he's like, come on in, baby. <laughs> really? People were like That's yelling. Cool. They're like, fuck it, go Yankees. He's yeah. like, shut the fuck up. And yeah. it was like it was the exact opposite of that situation. But I was thinking exactly that while we were at dinner. I was like, it's crazy that like no one's bothering him right now. Yeah. But then in the bathroom, it's like I guess once you get to your feet. Yeah, yeah. What's crazy is that Joe's still in the cut. Like he like he still 
hangs. I, because, I was, I w- when I saw that that setup, I was like, Rogan's not coming here. It's going to be a fucking frenzy if he walks in. He, was, he like, closed he the bar down. Yeah. He closed the bar. Well, Shane Gillis helps when he's like, one more drink. <laughs> I was blacked out at that point. Yeah. Leanne had pulled the plug on me. She was like, you're done. How many, how many Zins are in your mouth? <laughs> she's like, come on, I got three burgers. Let's go home and fuck. And I was like, and then Shane's like, one more drink. I love that energy. I yeah. love yeah. that energy. Yeah. I love when someone's like, one more. That's why, you know, that's why I love Gillis is like, you can tempt him into drinking and he can tempt me into it. I love it. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, I. Dude, when we had to leave, what was we, that? we were on our way out the door. What are they Shane, laughing like? at? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're just laughing at the fact that, that you don't really need to be tempted. Tempted yeah. to drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 you know, we were getting up to do our show before this and we knew we were doing that. So it was like one o'clock. We're like, I, we got to go. And I was like, I'm afraid to tell Shane we're leaving because I know he's going to be like, you pussy, stay and have another one. And like, we're going to stay and have another one. He's and- like, you know, Shane's like the guy in high school that hasn't found pussy yet. <laughs> Like he's the guy that just is about the bros the best, yeah, yeah. and football. That's and the he's best. like, bro, what do you mean you're going to fucking Beach Week? Yeah. We got two days, yeah. right, <laughs> dude? Dude, uh, that that reminds me of the question, the age old question, and everyone always has the right answer. But one of our coworkers once asked us, for like, say a genie comes down and he's like, you can only do one of two things for the rest of your life: you can make women come, or you can make your homies laugh. What, wow. what are you choosing? Whoa. And- <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you gotta take the homies. Come on. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, I spent a very, a very solid part of our relationship not making You're man come yeah, and, and it not good. knowing it, right? And being you and being fine. very cool with it, actually, right. and being like, "Well, it's about me." Yeah. She just likes it being in her, I guess. <laughs> yeah, she hates it, but you're good. So I whatever. talked to an investor last night, and he goes, "Your vodka is good," and I regret. And I kept saying it. I couldn't shut my mouth. I go, "Buddy." Malcolm Gladwell says you have to ten, spend, put your 10,000 hours in. Well, I put my 10,000 10, hours in two things. Drinking vodka and eating pussy. I go, let me introduce you to my wife. <laughs> and and it was like, everyone was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know about that one, but we did say on our show earlier today, you might be the greatest introducer of all time. <laughs> You might you, you might, might be better might... at introducing people than anybody is than Jordan at basketball. Like and and also it's because you're lying. Like he introduced <laughs> yeah. us to a couple billionaires. He's like these guys have the biggest podcast on the planet. They're you know they're they're movie stars. I was like yeah. okay, how are you, man? Nice to meet you. I've, I've seen this many like times. Bucks. I know exactly. What it, it does make you feel good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's really good. I, at you it. walk away believing. I'm like, I think he's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we are movie stars. I love, I love, I love the Chicago Bulls intro music. As I meet someone, because they go, "Hey, can I introduce your friend?" And then I hear, "Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please welcome Bird Kreischer." <laughs> and I'm like, "Very good to meet you. Have I shown you my stomach?" <laughs> From North Carolina. <laughs> yes. Six uh, foot six. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we were we were talking about. About our our balance because even this this trip was uh, you know you, you you texted both of us don't with, fucking pussy sip it <laughs> I know what you're doing dude listen you little fucking <laughs> when you pussy sip it I've been there we were like oh let's have a drink and then you go but I'm not really drinking <laughs> when you're with the boys you have a drink Kevin Cheers. you're right Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> but I was I'm saying, actually I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm doing all right. Well, you, I, you have work to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told him today on our show. I was like, I'm so grateful for you because when we got the text. I was very happy to be invited, but I was like, I, I don't know if we're just gonna fly in for one night to party. And he was like, Let's go. We're going. You know, like these guys yeah. have been great to us. We're going. And I was like, Fuck yeah, we're doing it. And then when we get there, so he makes me go to do things and then I'm getting people's numbers and I'll be the one who follow up and yeah. text and have them come on the show and all that so it's like he he makes me come to the building and then I'll do all the follow up yeah. work and it, it's like that's the only way we work together <laughs> otherwise we would just be bums at home he's you know? the he's the fucking 19 year old hanging out at the high school selling weed you're the guy bringing in the packages <laughs> <laughs> it works. and it by works. the way there's a reason we're sitting like this yeah <laughs> 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 I will say this though, I you know I had no idea you guys were were gonna be there, but mm-hmm. that is also the magic of Bert is that I he he'll just like yeah, I texted like 
everybody, all my friends, everybody I know yeah. in who live in different parts of the country. And you're like, you invited them to this? Yeah. He's like, yeah. No, like I right. would always, my mind is like, these guys live in New York. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. coming down put here. That on them. Yeah, I would yeah. never think to invite somebody to yeah. fly down here. <laughs> ever. <laughs> it was the second we saw that attack. I was like, of course we're going to go. They're, you know, I want to... Sometimes I feel underappreciated. Not today. Not today. <laughs> I have theme music today. I, I've been walking around with theme music. The, <laughs> just so amazing, you know. <laughs> I did one of the coolest things in the world that any dude's going to do for their friends. I did. When I surprised you guys and flew you to oh, Amsterdam. Yes. And you know oh, that nice. story, right, Tommy? Yes, I do. So, and I feel like you should be appreciated for it. Oh, no, no. I got my appreciation last night. I, and and I say this and like, it never went viral the way I thought it should, and ne never was repaid with other people the way I thought it should. Like I thought it should be a thing, dudes do. And you know I did it because you do it to your friends, not yeah. at the last minute. But Tom flies out friends he grew up with. He's like, yo, I'm at the United Center for two shows. It's fucking big. Why don't you come out? We'll have dinner. We'll spend some time together. It's, That's it's awesome. A, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's Tom's brain. Of course, I go. How do I monetize that? <laughs> and so I go. I'm how, do I get, how do I get worldwide appreciation? For the... <laughs> it's, it's, it's insane. It's insane. The internet did not worship me properly. <laughs> when, when they did not wear worship me properly. <laughs> when we did Habitat for Humanity, he's like, I want my fucking name on a building. <laughs> An action-packed fight card is taking over Las Vegas for UFC 300 and DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of UFC, is giving new customers a shot to turn five bucks into $150 instantly in bonus bets with any UFC 300 bet. This is what I'm talking about, man. Big events, big bets, getting involved, the excitement, the thrill of watching every round is so much better when you got a bet going. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the code BEARS. New customers can bet five bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with the code BEARS. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.co slash MMA for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. The best way to learn a new language? Immersion. Living where the language is spoken and using it every single day. But if that's not in the cards for you this year, you can still learn language the second best way, and that is with Babbel. Be a better you in 2024 with Babbel, the science-backed language learning app that actually works. Don't pay hundreds of dollars for private tutors or waste hours on apps that don't really help you speak the language. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are handcrafted by over 200 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel's designed by real people for real conversations. Studies from Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove Babbel is better. One study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is the equivalent to a full semester at college. Let me tell you, my daughter, Georgia Kreischer, is obsessed with Babbel, and she is learning Span Span Spanish. She is learning Spanish quicker that I've ever, quicker than a trip to Mexico, I'm telling you, this kid speaks Spanish, and I watch her use it. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners right now. Get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash bears. Get up to 60% off at babbel.com slash bears. That's spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash bears. Rules and restrictions may apply. Oh God! <laughs> you would be you would be a great dictator, my like, dear leader. Where they make you like cry for a month if you die, you would be perfect. This is one of his fantasies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a hardcore one of my fantasies. Yeah. I, I get that. I, I've I've gone home with dinner once where I had a bag that like of extra food, and I was walking with a girl, and I was like, I'm gonna give it to a homeless person. And she's like, Oh, there's one. 
And I was like, he's asleep. He's like, so just leave it in front of him. I was like, well, he's not going to say thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, well, I got to wake him up. <laughs> I, I kept there. I was like, I'll find the guy who's awake and he's going to appreciate me properly for yeah. my half a chicken roast. My, my flowers came last night when I said, hey, Joe, can I introduce you to two guys? And he said, sure. And I said, it's... Uh, Kevin and John, they have a great fucking podcast. Bring you over, you guys say hi. And he's like, uh, and I, and then, then privately I'm talking to him and I was like, you know, those are, they really have their finger on the pulse of like funny comics. Like if, the, if there's a comic on their show, it's a fucking legit comic. They really know comedy and this and that. And he's like, how do you know them? And I said, I, you know, I, I really don't know, but this is why I love them. I said, I texted them with 24 hours notice to fly to Amsterdam last year. And Joe's like, what? And I got my flowers for that whole trip in Rogan going, hold on, wait, what do you mean? I said, buddy, they 24 hours notice. I said, I'm going to text you. You have to show up at the airport. You can't tell, you don't know where you're going until you get there. And I flew to the master. And he's like, shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and he goes, how was it? And I was like, it ended with us and the dude from Entourage at flying dildos getting face fucked by fucking pussies. And Joe's Bro, like, I got ass fucked by a shoe. <laughs> yeah, ass to mouth. 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 Yeah. Ass to mouth. But the, but the so best is mouth. Joe goes, who from Entourage? <laughs> 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 and I was like, I was like, this is perfect. I was, it was, it was all the payoff I needed for that trip for Joe to go. Twenty four hours, and yeah. they did it. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, we, Hoover Montage. <laughs> I want to make sure you know how much we appreciate. I, that. I know that. We've said I know thank that. you a million times before, but it truly was one of the most baller moves ever. Like Can that's that's the shit you should do when you got money and made it and have opportunities and like but uh, you know a lot of people don't do it. That was so fucking awesome, man. It was, was really it was cool. so it was maybe one of the funner days of my life cuz it was also Winston Churchill day. Yeah. Yep. And it was yep. Chinese New <laughs> Year's. Yep. And we all were dressed up and oh. ran and everything. Mhm. Mm it was I could if I could live that day over again I'd do it again. I, I, like my Groundhog Day that was fucking mm -hmm. fun. Mark <laughs> blacked out on mushrooms and then when, we found him in a canal. When he came back, ah, it was incredible. What Tom? Yeah. What, what what is it about you that doesn't make you want to live a fun life? Because <laughs> you like when you get Tom loose, it's the funnest. Mm -hmm. It's the funnest. Like when you see the when he you, and uh, this these are the words. Do you want to go upstairs and have a cigar? Like that's when you know. Well, Tom's yeah, I'm just saying you gotta to you gotta loose. get into Tom's things. You he doesn't like the things that you you know what I mean. If you do a yeah. bunch of shit he doesn't like, he's not gonna get excited for it. <laughs> oh, fucking! If you say, "Hey, I got a guy who says we can drive Lamborghinis right. on a track," that's Tom's what you're gonna see dick it. gets hard. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, I do like that. It's hard to yeah. drive when you're. I know. Hard. The, I, I was gonna say I I oh, I, not... I could use another. <laughs> you could do. Let's get off the fucking rails. I am, I am so not good at at spending money at all. I, I was telling a story recently where I was talking to uh, a financial advisor, and he was like, "So what's your five year plan?" And I was like, oh, "I don't have one." And he's like, "Well, what do you need the money for?" And I was like, "Well, I guess I don't need it." And he was like, "So what do you want me to do with it?" I was like. I don't know. I guess I don't really care what you do. <laughs> Bro, That's no, no, <laughs> pretty amazing. A, Listen no. to this. One time, like the very first time we ever even like talked to an agent, they were like, what's the lowest you'll go? Like, what's what's like the lowest point for your salary as we go into this negotiation? <laughs> John goes, I don't know, like half of what I'm making now? <laughs> and he was like, we're not going to go lower, dude. Are you crazy? <laughs> he was like, he's like, what would be your hard no? And I was like, if they cut my salary in half, I'd definitely be pretty pissed. <laughs> <laughs> we are the worst fucking businessman on the planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, one more, one more, one more. <laughs> he benched, he benched, uh, uh, 135 42 times 42, 42 times Jesus Bro, Christ <laughs> the only person who can we do, we do at uh, NFL Combine at Barstool I love what Barstool's doing Every, by the way. Uh, I love what Barstool's doing 42? Right yeah. dude it was nuts Jesus. it was crazy <laughs> we've done it three times now we did one 12 years ago whatever it was it was me Portnoy and Big Cat just the three of us and then we had one like five years ago when the company got bigger and now we did like a real official one in our new Chicago office we had all the right equipment and everything and you know, Will Compton yes. is, is on the roster. And so he's like, we're all like thinking, he's probably going to win the fucking 
yeah. the combine, you know? But I was like, I don't know. My guy was going to give him a run for his money. And I, I think Will, it took Will every ounce of his being to beat Feidelberg at 43. But I was like, yeah, he's also just coming off of a fucking NFL career. Yeah. My guy here is just a regular dude. And you realize he went, he went into a dark place to get 43. <laughs> oh, oh, like, there, was a, there was a door in his head that it was like, you can't fucking let a regular person <laughs> yes. fucking yes. I, I think if I went after him, I think it was whoever went last wins. Yeah, I could have seen that. I went first. I hit 42. I think he hit 43. If he hit 43, I was hitting 43. And I keep, I, I, I don't want to hate on the boy, but some of those reps were a little short. Wow. <laughs> Was going, Fuddleberg was going chest to elbows locked. I'm just saying. But I mean, no, he, I, he I would was say people, that people weight, who like, say lock it out or people who say that's not a full push up, go all the way up, are the same as Holocaust deniers. <laughs> Shut your fucking mouth. Yeah. I don't want to hear it. I don't care what the numbers are. Six million. Let's just say six million. <laughs> fucking six million. That's enough. All right? They killed some. You, you have to admit, they killed some. A bunch. Yeah. Full extension. Same Full thing. Extension. Full extension. Exactly the same as the combine, man. That is crazy. So I, I, what, I'm curious about this, because, like, Big Cat's a big dude. Like, if he gets after it. No, he's not in good shape. Like, I know, I know, I know. But, like. He was. He When, when he first started. He was in. He used to do CrossFit. I was gonna say he was like no. very fit, and I remember all of us were like, "Well, that's like, we don't do that." Around yeah, here. yeah, I yeah, think yeah. we had heard the name Big Cat from Chicago, and we just pictured like fucking yeah. Big Cat from Chicago. Character. Yeah, and I remember the first time seeing Dan, I was like, "Ah, oh, damn, he's in like shape and shit." Fuck that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we, I remember we did say like, because at this point we're not doing podcasts, we're not doing videos. Yeah, we are literally just blogging yeah. from home. Posting pictures of like celebrity girls' asses and just like dick jokes and shit, and we were like, "Give it some time, give it some time," and you know, <laughs> within a few months, he, he fell into the blogger lifestyle yeah, yeah. pretty quickly. He's you know, hot you know dogs why. every meal. Yeah. You know why? Yeah. Yeah. He's got. He's he's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> he's too pretty, and yeah. and pretty guys, pretty boys, their stomachs fall apart. Like if you, if you, he's a pretty boy. That, he's a pretty boy. Is that you making excuses for yourself? No, no, no. I'm so no, no. pretty fucking hot when I was no, a kid. No, no, no. Listen, my my problem was me. But but Big Cat's a, a strikingly attractive man. Yeah. Jesus Christ. He is a, he's a good looking man. Wait, are you going to fuck Dan? What's no, going no, on? he's a good looking He's got very pretty eyes. I was going to say, the eyes are beautiful. Here's he's the thing. a gorgeous dude. Let, let, let Dan hear it. Tell him. <laughs> like just Dan. To camera. To hey, camera. Dan. Big Cat. You are good looking. <laughs> If you had been my bracket when we fucked people, I'd let you come inside me before oh kill my, a cam. Oh my god! Now, wait, uh, wait, did you guys not? Do you guys not cool with gay shit? Oh please. Okay, so <laughs> but the problem with good-looking guys yeah. is there is sometimes they ignore their body because their face. Then when they put on a shirt, right. they go, "The face is gonna do the work." Mm, yeah, and then, this is the money maker. This is the money maker. Yeah. I, I the jawline's still there. I'm rocking mm -hmm. a mustache. Mm -hmm. Good eyes. Good hairline. Mm -hmm. I can throw on glasses. Everyone thinks I read. Like, <laughs> and 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 that's what happens to pretty boys is they their body falls apart. Yeah, I get yeah. that. Makes honestly, you really landed that plane, buddy. I was like, <laughs> "What is did. he talking about?" And I, like, oh, I, I deserve a fucking potty for this podcast. I'm killing it today. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The Holocaust analogy is the best analogy I've ever come up with in my life. Uh, yeah, just it's a lot like bench reps. Yeah. <laughs> Lock it out. Yeah. Uh, here's a good one that we just said the other day for you, Bert. I think you like this. Uh, if you could bring back someone from the dead and have sex with them, who would it be? <laughs> We we think there's a right answer for for. I, I didn't know sex was gonna be part. I still was gonna say my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, thank God I didn't fucking answer that. Quick. That's my answer. Your grandma. <laughs> <It's impossible laughs> questions done. Great grandmother. <laughs> and fuck her. <laughs> um, if I could bring someone back from the dead and fuck her, uh, or him. No, no, there, no, no, no. We, no, we said uh, there. I, I believe there's no, an actual no, there's correct no answer for women and gay men. Uh, I have my goat list is. Uh, Jackie O. Uh, Feidelberg went down the same road, I, a similar road. Similar road, yeah. Dude, she's first a ladies, first yeah. ladies. I had Nancy Ray. Fights with Nancy, Nancy Ray. Ray. Yeah. The throat <laughs> throat okay. You know that story? <laughs> I've heard. Yeah. I've heard yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Tell everyone who doesn't know One of about how most... great Nancy Reagan was at sucking cock. <laughs> Maybe the like the biggest case of like desecrating a dead person ever. <laughs> but was like a couple of years ago, it went viral that she just sucked everybody off and gave the best head. <laughs> I don't, I don't think it's, it's desecration. It's, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, we're praising it's just her. Like, hey, here's something you know about this person. It's like how we just learned Fidel Castro could ball. Yeah, <laughs> it, but it's, he can play it's basketball. crazy. Oh yeah, he can hoop. It's crazy they're, they're, to think they of actually Nancy believe Reagan. He might have. It's, wait, what? It's crazy to think of Nancy Reagan on her knees, just like just, just like, yeah. like yeah. slobby yeah. head. And you're like, 
Nancy. And it was everybody. Her you know, hair was, didn't move. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's like every from from politicians to to movie stars, like everybody. Oof. Jane Mansfield would be badass. Who's that? Was yeah. it? It's the epic picture of Sophia Loren. I was gonna say Sophia oh, Loren. Oh, Sophia oh, Loren is a great a fucking, one. Sophia Loren is. That is a great. I, I'm, one. In her I'm prime. Tell you, let's let's take it this. Way. Now, hold on. Are you bringing them back from the dead like right before they die or into their? No. Or, yeah. No, are, they, are, they like, are they like? Are they eighty three? And you're like, just Dude, stay I, alive. Fuck two more minutes. <laughs> I'd fuck Susan Sarandon now. I was okay. gonna say she's alive. She's alive. She's, she's gonna hear this. That's awkward. <laughs> well, hard offer. I'm in. Susan Sarandon is still fucking hot. Yeah, yeah. She's sexy. I I don't want to hear her talk, but like she would be exhausting. <laughs> fucking, she'd be like, so your friends are. Da, da, da. Do you realize that she was smiling a moment ago, and then she was like, "Oh, this guy's a fucking asshole." <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Sorry, she went from like, "That's nice." Like, you want to hear I me have talk? Nothing. I, that's the beauty of, uh, and I say this, and I hope you guys hear this the right way. This is better than anyone can ever do. This is the funnest fucking thing in the world. Yeah. <laughs> is to have really funny friends mm -hmm. and see them, and then fly in to fear vodka launch and then go, hey, do you guys want a podcast tomorrow? And you guys go, we'll change our flight. Bro. And then go, let's fucking hang tomorrow. Because it's the, it's <laughs> also the ease of it. You know what I mean? Like there's, a, you can be a movie star and all these, like you can tour Taylor Swift, but that's, that's hard. That's a lot to do. And I mean, I guess you guys go on tour a lot. So like the comic lifestyle is not easy, but doing this is like, for, for the opportunities it can afford and the money you can potentially make and kind of how easy it is to just kick it with your friends. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, I feel like it's like them, some secret we unlocked. I'm like, why don't, why don't all you guys try to do this? And we're not that. And we're not that talented. <laughs> no, that's that's yeah, yeah. I mean, Obviously, that's the, the I'm thing, definitely the thing, not talented. I will say, I this. am for sure not talented. <laughs> to all you guys out there starting podcasts, you're better than us. Yeah. Like I'm being yeah. serious. I watched a dude have a clip going, "I made the greatest mac and cheese in the world last night." That was the beginning of his clip. And I went, "God, where does he come up with his material?" Because <laughs> I watched his whole fucking video with some fat guy in like a. I don't even know if it's a podcast or they just do clips these days. Yeah, like, that's true too. But like, dude. When you think of, and I, I think about this a lot, like Tom and I started doing Two Bears, and I, and I think it, all this, everyone was doing solo podcasts, and then all of a sudden you start seeing buddy podcasts. Man, they're so good. You yeah. guys are so good. Like, your podcast is so good. Thank when you, you see, like, you, McCusker and Shane yeah. are it's amazing. Chemistry. Especially it's, those guys who have known each other truly forever. Yeah. You know, like, you can't replicate that. It's it, But it's like, there's so many fucking solid podcasts out there mm -hmm. that I start going like, yeah, I'm going to get found out. I'm just selling jeans. <laughs> Everyone else is digging for gold and I'm selling Levi's. <laughs> like, I, like, but this job, I do this forever. Yeah. Are, this are forever. you guys going to get in on the streaming wave at all? We have a lot of guys at Barstool doing these crazy streams. Like just last night we had one guy, Jerry locked himself in a, in a, in a gym and he did not leave until he broke Caitlin Clark's scoring record. He's last night he scored. 3,500 whatever points. He had 509 threes. Such disrespect. <laughs> so it took him five hours. That's it? it, it yeah. five, <laughs> he had like 500 threes, 600 twos, and 700 free throws, whatever and it was. like, I'm and better than you, <laughs> woman. Like, that was the whole fucking... <laughs> and we, we and there's it. so many guys, and I'm like, yeah, fuck that bitch. You got her. Like, you so. know, you guys are the pushback. For, you, woke, woke culture is barstool. Like, you guys are the pushback. What you guys are doing, I find so fucking fascinating. Like, when that kid, uh, I don't know who he is, but he locked himself in a room to hit a hole-in-one. Same, same, same guy. Same guy. Same guy who did he, the King Clark he, one. He, he, he took, you know, like, 2,000 strokes to get a hole-in-one. Really? We, we, yeah. Oh, buddy. It took him, it took so him like 48 hours. Bar, I, this is my breakdown. He was like, on his course? hands were bleeding. No, it was, a, it was a simulator, and he just oh, swung, just a, swung, oh, 2,000? And, yeah. and he played Pebble Beach. Yeah, it was like Pebble Beach 8, maybe, something like that. He had like, you know, J.J. Watt and celebrities like chiming in on it. <laughs> Golf guys were watching it. It was we, awesome. We have a guy. So, so we had the dude last night doing the scoring record. The same time, we have a dude right now, as we speak, he's living in solitary confinement for a week. And he's it, just in and, a room and it's by himself. And they play a song five every fucking days. five minutes, and, right? It's streaming. And streaming you, live. And you, you can watch the whole thing. He's you, sleeping. Do you pay to watch nope. it? Spring. Yeah. That feels like that whole world is like so set up for his brain. That's yeah. right. That's what I, I was going to say. I can't imagine. I, I, this guy, I, I he was uh, counting uh, grains of rice. They're giving him these stupid challenges while he's in there. He had to put together a puzzle while he had oven mitts on. You got to count the number of grains of rice. Can I soft pitch my idea? that Yeah. This is my baby. I've wanted to do this forever. It's called Stranded and Branded. And Stranded I and Branded? I want to move to a desert island and only sustain my life off of uh, corporate integrations. 
So people will send me, uh, Porosos would be one, great integration. Uh, I would love uh, Lucy's, Kettle and Fire. Lucy's mm -hmm. Kettle and Fire, but they send them in crates to my island and I only can live off of branded integrations. And I live there for 30 days. I, and the first one, I'd love a car sponsorship, a nice Subaru, dropped off on the island, and then I get to tear it apart and use it as a castaway in every way possible. <laughs> but, like, I love... I my, mean, bro, that, these are the things you can make that happen. I, yeah, but I, I don't have 30 days. Like, it's well, tough. Yeah, it's 30, tough. It's, but just do uh, a week. Do, but I know. love what Barstool's doing, and I think it's because... I think it's... I honestly think it's because you guys got bought by the big company and Dave bought it back for a dollar mm -hmm. and you guys all then went public, you had money and you got to do what you wanted to do. Yeah. It's so cool. When I look at like, when I watch the Combine, I, you know, I watched it live. Isn't that <laughs> fucked up? Yeah. Like I have a lot of shit on my plate. <laughs> yeah. And I watched it live. I went, like I went to YouTube. Tuesday I went to, 11 a.m. or whatever. I went to YouTube and it said uh, upcoming or something. You know, yeah, like it's, and I went, I'll, I'll leave it here. Yeah. And then I heard them talking. And I, it was Big Cat, I think I heard first. And I went, I'm in. Yeah. And I fucking love that shit. I love it so much. It's so funny too because it is tune in network. Like it is like old school. Yeah. Like. Appointment television. Appointment television. Oh, yeah. television. Yeah, it's Have you noticed, is it a big shift since Dave came, or like the ownership changed? Us personally, like we never really changed. We kind of said and did whatever we wanted all the time. <laughs> Which uh, but, probably wasn't the smartest play, but we're not, we're not really gamblers. So like we, it gambling, been, it if you gambled been fake if we were like went big on like pen gaming, like, you know, you talked about gambling here and there, but like we weren't gamblers, so like, it didn't really work. So the guys who so, were gambling were like, you had to, you have to change your whole. You can't talk a certain way. You, you have to make oh, certain bags. which is like a big legal, I, part you know? of your guys' culture, though, as a brand. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it was, yeah. you know, a little bit tough for those guys. And and then when now that Penn sold us and we're like those clamps are off, it was a little like freeing for those guys. I think. But okay. We never. I, I would say on the whole, there was a couple things here and there that you weren't allowed to say about gambling, and maybe a couple times people would bite their tongue about certain jokes or whatever. But like for the most part. We let it fly. Well, the one guy got, can't, got fired, and then Dave rehired him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What that, did he say? Sang the N-word or something? Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he was so this guy. dumb. That, <laughs> was so, that don't mean that he did that. It was so gay to watch unfold that somebody clearly, like, reading something. Yeah. And be like, oh, and then not, 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 and then they'd be like, you're fired. <laughs> like it was what? Like that's corporate. That's corporate mentality, and that's uh, not what I subscribe to at all. But I and I, it's what I love about the direction Barstool's going in. Is it just seems untethered? It's yeah. it's very much like it. I, it's a situation that never <laughs> ever happens where, you know, it's like was it uh, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered? I think there was probably a three year run where we were a hog, where mm -hmm. it was just it's like fat, we were we were being cor corporate. It wasn't great content. I think it was only like probably like the last two or three years of pen. It means it we got like, like too big for our britches. We kind of oh, got like fat <laughs> and slow. We're still sitting there going, wait, isn't it the same thing? I don't no, know which we, one I am. Pigs, you fatten up a pig to kill it so you can feed people with it. Yeah. So pigs get fat, hogs get started. We were a hog for a while. And I think you very rarely get to see a company become a pig again. Yeah, we came and back. I think we somehow, yeah. came like, back like, like I, I can't think of it ever happening with another company. Where it's yeah. like, all right, you guys are the little guy again. Right. And Yeah, somehow some... we became like the underdog again. <laughs> Dave's buying a $42 million house, but we're the underdogs. <laughs> it's insane. I do, love, I do love that he unabashedly talks about his money. Yeah, yeah. I love it. It inspires me. It really does. I go. Well, he's also, I mean, he's a dude who like. He, you know, delivered fucking newspapers in a in a shitty like van for you yeah. Know, and years he worked on his end. way so up. So when you get there, it's like fuck yeah. He's got I, a beautiful I did swing, it. beautiful baseball swing. <laughs> yeah. he he faster has hands than Delano yeah? DeShields. Yeah, he's a beautiful baseball. That was swing. the the uh, the line his baseball coach told him. He coached Delano DeShields, and he's like, you got faster hands than him. And Dave will tell you that every single time you talk about baseball. <laughs> uh, Wade Boggs broke down my swing. So oh, yeah, nice. I love how quick. How about this? We got another guy, uh, Marty Mush, who oh, uh, yeah. he said. I'm gonna go face major league pitching this in spring training. I'm gonna do 100 at bats. How many hits do you think I'm gonna get? And we were like, fucking zero, dude. Yeah. He faced uh, Trevor Bauer, went two for four. First four no, at bats, like, but like, like, oh, oh, two for four. Okay, yeah, yeah. He I think he went two for eight. Okay. Right, but like right away, like ripped a single up the middle, like. And they had a simulator that was be that is like being like that would have dropped in. That would have been like, a base gap. Yeah. Can I tell you contact. all I think when I hear that? Is imagine if that guy was famous, your buddy, yeah, Marty. and all I think is Bert can do that. 
I go, I go, Bro, I go. Link up with him. Go down. He's do, I, he still has more pitchers to do with. I'm sure he'd love to join I, you. I think that's. I love that. It's it's. You know what it is? It's my favorite thing in the world is hungover. Sunday morning in the living room energy. Yeah, like when you read those debates and those arguments and and like, yeah, and you're. I could get a hit off of that guy. No, you fucking couldn't. (laughs) But but like Barstool and you guys are like, you're in a position where you can kind of. It's like, all right, prove it. Go fucking, let's call him Trevor Bauer. Who, who get is this line. guy that, that got the hits? Who was it? He's just one of the guys who works with us. He's one, Marty okay. Bush. He's just, uh, Marty Mush. he's he's one of the gambling he, guys. He's got he, a beautiful mind. He's like, you know, an idiot savant. And, faced other pitchers too? Yeah, yeah. and then and then he, uh, the Oakland A's uh, opening day starter ripped a hit off of him. There was a couple guys who were like, they were like, ah. I hope like the scouts don't see this. Like, I don't think I'm going to make the team. If I... <laughs> <laughs> like, he might be having an effect on major league he, players. Does career. he have a legit baseball he, background? I mean, well, he must, you right? know, he played, like, he played in college. Yeah. We all do. Like, no, uh, yeah. Not, no, he, yeah. Like he played, but like Division three college. Right, but that's still like more than the average guy. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, not yeah. that I was like, you're not going to even touch. And these guys were going like balls to the wall. They were like, we are not fucking around. They told him ahead of time, like you're getting all my pitches, full velocity. And he's right hit. away, he gets a Can hit. you imagine this? Like the fucking rush oh. of confidence that guy has. He when, said, in the way, he was when, the best moment of his life. But like, not just with the hit, but like, that's like one thing is the the moment you hit contact and you feel good. But like when he walks off and the first time, like he makes eye contact with someone like you, going like, eh, fucking did like, that. <laughs> fuck it. Like, it was also like the crack of the bat. It like echoed. It went right oh, up the yeah. middle. The cameraman had to jump out of the way. It was like. He smoked it. And he sees like a, another pro player being like, <laughs> "It's giving the count to you, yeah, man." Yeah, it's it's, it's fucking mean, amazing. By the way, did we kind of got a little away from it. I was gonna say earlier, stranded and branded is like the greatest idea I've ever heard. Yeah, do it. Dude. <laughs> do it. I think some of these the conversation went away, and I didn't want to interrupt that. But like, yeah. stranded and branded is fucking amazing. And the yeah. amount of money that you make doing it because hey, people want uh, me. Can you- can you be my Portnoy and make it happen? Yeah, we can do straight and branded. <laughs> if you, straight honestly, branded. if you guys get into the streaming world and do some of these, like we're gonna lock ourselves in a room for twenty four hours, lock ourselves in an island, do it till we you know, we're not leaving until it's done. You definitely, uh, I'm sure Alan is back there just being like making calls already. I, I, I there's so many things I wanted to do, like that I, I, I uh, yeah, I, 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 th- I think where you got the direction you guys are going, and I would love. I would love to do more stuff like that because that's all I give a fuck about. Like I, sometimes you get a script and you're like, you read it and you're like, uh, yeah. I guess I can fix it. Yeah. And then you're like, okay. And and I don't know if I want to spend three months doing that. I could definitely spend a month on an island. I already have the island picked out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're doing. It. Picked out. You're fucking really? doing this. <laughs> yeah. In the, right outside the Bahamas. I I. I, 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 I beautiful family owns it. I've reached out to them. A beautiful family owns it. Yeah, so you. By the way, at the time, you're, at the time they were, they were trying to sell the island. Oh, Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> Little Saint, what is it? <laughs> Buddy, if we did Stranded and Brandon on Epstein's Epstein. island. <laughs> yes. I'll tell you this, the views will be through the roof. Through the roof. <laughs> I don't know how many brands are going to be down, but the ones that are are going to get their money's worth. That's for certain. Dude, make Stranded and Brandon happen. Yeah, no, I'll do it. Okay, I'll do it in a heartbeat. Really? I will join then, you and, if I can. Well, no, you, you know what it is? Solo, is, is? Is you bring out you a brand come? sponsorship. You come out and you go. Bert is day four, and I'm bringing out fucking pirates booty, pirate, 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 pirate water, water. Pirate, yeah, water. Yeah, yeah, pirate water, pirate yeah, yeah. water, pirate water. And I'm like, fucking thank God, I've been. But you need snacks, so pirates booty's here. Too. Yeah, yeah, pirate booty's that. here too. <laughs> and then we just drink by a fire, and I just catch you up, and you know I would not let you talk. Yeah. I'd be like, I haven't talked to anybody in fucking five days. <laughs> you I, have no idea. Have I ever told you about the time I got involved with the Russian mafia? <laughs> I like having people who you are close with or friends with come out, and you either get the option. So it's Bert. I'm here with pirate water. You can have pirate water, or you can have me for the. Day. Ooh, you get some some yeah. Oh, you start to do you. some challenges <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. But I don't. I can't help you with anything out there. No, no. I'm just but like, you, you have, have someone to listen to stories. <laughs> <You gotta. laughs> Tell me a story. Uh, yeah. That actually reminds me. I was going to ask you when you were like earlier. You're like, I don't know what I'm chasing. Do you think you're chasing more money or applause? Oof. Oh come on, that's an easy answer. I'm just, what do you think it is? The applause, applause. and the praise and yeah. the love and the... Yeah. You love. have enough money. You just love... It's love. You, like it's you love. Say, I'm you, chasing you, love. You, you start off the podcast talking about how you don't get enough appreciation on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I like the love. Yeah. I, I love the uh, love. I, I, I Some uh, some guy let, left a shitty comment on uh, one of our Two Bears posts. I, I never read comments, but it was like, 
the first, and it was a good post. I liked the post. And so I was like, you know, you get caught sometimes. You go, ooh, comments up. Wonder what it says. Like, it's got to be positive. Usually it's someone you know, and you're like, oh, nice. And it was like, uh, don't, do you remember when Tom and Bert used to be funny or something? And then I was like, oh, I'm going to comment. Like, but you thought we were fun. Like, I was trying to think of like a fun comment to come back. Yeah. And then like five people came off the plane and were like, uh, Hey man, I love what you do. I love it. And then I was like, oh, I, that energy. It's like I don't really understand people that don't like being famous because I go, it's really fucking fun. Right. It's really fun <laughs> yeah. for someone to go like, hey, you're the fucking Kool Aid guy, and yeah. then to know that you gave them a moment sure. that they just giggled, and yeah. then go, oh yeah, I, I, it's, it's, I, yeah, I don't think I could ever tap out. Like I think I'll always, I'll you would always, do this for free. It's always, it's free. always good. Like no matter. Who you like when you're a kid and you see your grandparents and you made their day like that was a nice feeling mm -hmm. and now you just make the day of people who are strangers and like that feels and a lot good of people like, but, but, oh shit days. like that person's happy yeah. but yeah, it's yeah, also it's yeah. also tethered to so many other things like not just comedy and, and podcasting but like introducing you guys to Joe last night it's fun I really get off on that sure. like and, and and like going like hey can I bring you guys over can can, can I I love uh, I love energy I want that's why I'm fucking terrified to death is because that energy <laughs> no energy bro yeah, that's and, and, well, and, and energy you know, is over tom's there. dad when he passed said something to tommy and i that i think of every fucking all every day i think of it he said buddy life goes on life goes on and i think of that i i you know it's so f funny in that i never met your dad or anything and but that one statement means his life goes on because I think of it every day. I think mm -hmm. of your dad a lot. Where I go, that's such a fucking profound statement. Is it does go on? It does go on, and people are forgotten. And you have to do your next day. And there will be days you don't think about me. But that statement sticks with me. And it's my thing. I fight against is I don't want to be forgotten. Yeah. I want to be. I want to be. Uh, I, w I just want people to go like, man, how cool would Bert be right now? Like that's yeah. the thing. Mm -hmm. That's the fucking thing. So I think my thing is not money. Fuck money. It's the can you leave a mark when when you're gone? Like Jimmy Buffett, your dad, mm -hmm. my, uh, my grandma. When I think of my grandma, she gave me this necklace, and I think of her all the time. Do you, will you be remembered? And you don't need to be remembered like like fucking Winston Churchill, but will you be remembered? And 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 how long can you put off that second death where no one remembers you? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. How long can you live where people still talk about you? Sure, I like giving. I like <laughs> like trying to. Uh, put new people onto it too because once you've done it it's like you you made your mark you guys will be remembered forever no but the amount of people who you can open that door for you know what i mean yeah that if we're not gonna drink our drinks <laughs> i'm drinking it <laughs> we got, we got i, I want to run this idea by you because uh we haven't really talked about this publicly yet but I, I figure what better place than to talk to you guys about it we got a new series that we're working on called not safe for work where we're having uh i mean hopefully every comic but right now we're kind of focusing on the newer kind of who's next in New York. And they're going to, it's like tiny desk music performances, mm -hmm. but for comedy. Mm -hmm. So it's in the Barstool office, very like, like literally where our desks are, just kind of like, no, not doing in the studio, doing mm -hmm. like, a, like a 15 minute stand up. And it's, it's that same sort of vibe as tiny desk where it's like a, but, a different setting. And it's just, it's in front of the Barstool audience, like where we're going to be, you know, the people in the crowd. And you just have these like new killers come in. But Tiny Desk brings like brings in some actual music fans for those shows. Yeah. Will you guys have any outside people? If not, my thing is I think that you know that reminds me a bit of like doing a um, a private or like a, an award show mm -hmm. where like the the thing is you just want you want to be fair to the comic, especially like an up and coming person, you want excited audience. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, like, yeah. cause right, like, right, it's right, one right. thing if you're like, and we work here and it's like, true. Well, that's why I, I, yeah, I, the, I think, I think Kevin and I differ on that. I think our fan, our, our coworkers, co-workers will be excited. I okay. think everyone at, at, at the office loves stand up comedy. I think everyone will be like, fuck yeah, this is going to be great. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no, no. I, but here's, I'll, I'm going to poke holes in this. Here's the problem. I'm not going to work new material. Obviously I'm going to try to sell it to a streamer. And, and even with the other, you want big names, you want big names. And what I would say, would say, bring in big names and have them do, uh, call, have the audience call out bits for them and say, like if I do would your, do it, if you go, Bert, highlights. tell the machine. Yeah, and, I, yeah, and, yeah. I, and we all laughed at the idea that I'm telling the machine. And then I told the machine, 
but I, I got to fuck around with inside the story sure. because I'm telling it to people that kind of already know it. Like if you said, tell old jokes, I'd be like, oh yeah, easy. I don't have to work. I can right. just show up and do Light it. Work, and yeah. that's what makes Tiny Death so great is you're listening to Scarface saying one of his bangers, but he's doing it in a different way. Right. When right, you hear right, them right. play acoustic, that's the, 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 the secret in the sauce isn't the actual musician playing. It's them playing in an intimate setting. Right. Yeah. So if you bring, if you bring, right. bring in Well, that's kind of what we're hoping to do is like, it's not, you know, you're not in a club or a theater. It's like, it's just, it's, it's kind of comedy in a weird spot that's not usually there. Set up we one night, of, set up one night and bring in bangers. Bring in. Well, listen, we Mark, want to do that. By Mark way, Norman, you know, yeah. Shane Gillis, yeah. Ari Shafir, Big J Okerson, but set up one night and, and only have them do one bit each, but it's an, and, and the audience picks the bit. And but they don't. The comic doesn't know it in the fly. One of the funner that things, wouldn't be an insult to you as a comic. Not I, at I, I all. would see. I would think that. I guess it's good to talk to you. Where like I would think if it's like, hey, come on in. Like their guys are gonna yell shit at you. Like I'd be like. I mean, there's different ways you can do. Like the new, the newer up and comer. I don't think you should. They, they definitely want to be prepared and tight. Right, right. And yeah. I also, I is, also, by the way, I said like the new up and comers. Like I want. I would love Soder and Big J to come through. I just yeah. didn't, you know. I mean, but but have like them do something that's I, that's tired something for them. Podcast. Have them know. do something that's tired for them. Like like I did it to you guys last night when I go, Joe. They've got the best small dick story in the world. Have yeah. you ever heard their small dick story? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one other thing about your about the audience, like however you set it up, like wherever the stage is. Have whatever the audience is be tight. Yeah, like don't yes. have people spread out. Right, it's like because it's almost it's, like one row. If it's going to be twenty five people or less, you need it to be very compact. Oh I'll do God. the first episode. I, I'll do I the mean, first episode, I, and I'll. Do, but it's got to be stuff I've already done on Netflix specials. You sure. can't tell me about it before. It's like it's the fun. Like m one of my favorite stories Tom has, and but it would be cool to see maybe two comics do it dueling, but like, like. We made um, Ron White tell Tater Salad uh, at Rogan's Club one night. Mm -hmm. They were all chanting the machine. I saw Ron White in the thing, and I said, I'll tell the machine if Ron White comes down and tells Tater Salad. Hell yeah. Ron White's like, fuck it, I'm in. <laughs> and he comes down, and he, and he goes, I don't even fucking remember the goddamn bit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he piecemealed this bit. It murdered so hard, I swear to God, that when he was done... They all started chaining the machine again, and I realized I can't tell the machine it's not as good as that bit. Yeah, yeah. And I went, yeah. I got to do material to get you ready for the. I got to lower this bar a sure. little bit. <laughs> I'll do it, but it would be fun, like to like when I said tell your small dick story to Rogan. It's that's my one of my favorite stories in the world. Tommy's story about finding the wallet is one of my favorite stories in the world. It's and I would listen to him tell it again, and that's that's what you want to capture. Yes, is mm -hmm. the. People have heard this, a, but you're hearing funny. it a different yeah, way. Little wrinkles in it. It's yeah. it's it's you're playing acoustic. It's like we yeah, all saw yeah. Nirvana play all their songs, but when they did it acoustic and you heard Kurt go, "Hold on, are we in, in E?" You're like, "Oh, oh shit, fuck. Yeah, they're yeah. really working this." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would yeah. be cool, Tommy. Can they tell your? Can tell, I have tell a, the small dick story? Yeah, tell it's, me. My, it's one of my. And by the way, we did it on the cruise. Yeah, we did it on the cruise. You guys are real inspirations to me because you live life untethered. You are. Real genuine bros, and I love that energy. <laughs> Thank you, bro. This is m m one of my, f I would say, top five favorite stories I've ever heard. Come on. <laughs> yeah. but now, this sucks because the bar is high, but I still think it's going to deliver. Okay. It still delivers. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Can I wait? Can we do it in, in a team? Yes. <laughs> so, I'll, so we're, like, we're, like we're at a dinner party. just tell the story. No, no, like we're at a dinner party. Like we're at a dinner party. And I love, you be my wife, you correct me when I'm wrong. <laughs> okay, deal. So he goes to this big hockey convention. Yep. Oh, was I right? I mean, it's the Spit and Chicklets, the Chicklets Cup in Buffalo, New York. Okay, it's like um, a pond hockey. It's tournament. a big, it's a big uh, roller hockey tournament. And he's a big hockey player. All bros, everyone's killing beers. He goes in to take a piss, and a dude walks in the bathroom. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm at the urinal, and yeah. a big long line for the bathroom was like at, at this venue in, in Buffalo. Urinal with uh, partitions, dividers? No, I don't think okay. so. I think it's standard urinal, and I just hear this commotion behind me. And it's just like, just some dude just goes, fellas! And everyone like turns their head. They're in a bathroom. <laughs> They're in a bath. No one's talking. Everyone's taking a piss. <laughs> fellas! And he just rips his pants down. And he goes, I got the smallest dick in the room. <laughs> and 
everyone in the pause like, what the fuck? And he got, yeah, he, he got a little dick. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And like everyone's kind of like, what the hell's gonna go on? What's gonna happen? And then he started going. Who's got smaller? Who's got smaller? <laughs> and another guy slides into the middle room and he's like, Fella! <laughs> I got the smallest dick in the room. <laughs> and he drops his pants and everyone's like, Who's, who's got, got smaller? <laughs> the place is now just going nuts. <laughs> who's got smaller? Who's got smaller? And the fucking the the stall door flings open like like, like <laughs> Big Bird kicks in and he's like, Fella! I got the smallest dick in the room. And his dude pulls pants out and it's three dudes in the middle of the room wagging their little dicks around. And everyone's going, who's got smaller? And just like, it was primal. It was chaotic. And then, That's just and then boys. someone noticed. Just boys. Someone noticed me and they were like, John, 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 John. And I was like, I don't have a big dick by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. But in a who's got small conversation. <laughs> <laughs> like, it is I was like I'm gonna ruin the vibe yeah, so yeah. I like skedaddled out of the room which was the greatest sense of confidence we ever had. I'm like yeah, yeah. I'll God, boys I'll fuck up the little dick competition yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a normal dick <laughs> <laughs> but then we actually so we did a show in Buffalo we did a show in Buffalo probably three months ago six months ago yep, yep. and the guys came those guys those guys yep. came and they had they they t-shirts shirts made up and then they they were like, just so you know, by the way, because I've told the story a million times, they were just, you know, when we were chanting John, we weren't chanting for you. We, we had our buddy John as in there. He's got a <laughs> tiny dick. And I was like, <laughs> but, but the, the ultimate kicker, I don't know if you've heard this yet. Uh -oh. they, we, we, got, we got an update on the story. They show us the dick of one of their other buddies. They're like, this is who we were trying to get out. This is John. And they show us his dick. And we were all like, what is yeah, that? Yeah, dude, that's fucking really small. <laughs> like, it was it was, the they most, had the photo of it? They had it was a three, it was a five of them he, or whatever. He it was. would have absolutely lost a small dick contest. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's yeah. like if this is what you guys are calling small, Holy your crow, your crew rolls. They deep. had won that Chicklets Cup or they'd won a separate hockey tournament. So it's the five of them posing with a, a trophy, but none of them were wearing pants. Holy so shit. So I, I was just like, hey boys, just so you guys know. The four of you have a huge cock. <laughs> He's got a normal yeah, yeah. part. <laughs> that's a good crew. This this yeah, group of right, guys are right. fucking fun guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, dude. Man. We did that when we were on the cruise. Our first night, I had not been drinking for like four months, three months, and I get on the cruise, and the energy we do our first live like moment on the cruise, and it's it's no one really knows what the cruise is, and but we have like a speedo contest, and. Everyone starts looking at one guy's speedo as not, not having a big dick. And I, and I, I said, I'll give $5,000 to the smallest dick on this boat. Dicks and, start coming out, right? And, <laughs> For five grand. <laughs> women start going, him! Him! <laughs> him! I wish, hey, hey, Pete can't hear this, but we have a picture of that guy's dick. Yeah. He showed it to it's, Leanne. He had to prove it. He showed it to Miss Pat. No! Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yo! Showing your tiny dick to Miss Pat is like torture. Because you know, you know, the ex it's just going to be in the expression of like, mm. <laughs> oh, the, I felt really bad for the Give guy him who came the in second place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, because you don't get money. I ended up giving him 2500 bucks because yeah. I was like, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. You just but, got a small dick in your energy, Was it like a micro penis? Yeah. I, 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 Pete, Pete, text me if you're listening. I have, we have a picture of the dick. I won't share it all. I'd almost rather have a full blown micro than like a bizarrely small. At least like yeah. that guy, yeah. he goes around and wins five thousand yeah, dollar challenges. It's like you'd rather be a little person than five three. Right, right. <laughs> Turn me into a full blown circus act. Hey, no, dude, I have a medical condition, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna win five grand for, for from five, birth. Three, you just you, have a three grand? inch piece. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. That is, that is but that shit, that is the energy I strive for in life, fellas. Is the fellas. <laughs> Bro, it's yeah. funny. The people who do know it, when you just say fellas, it's like, it's almost like Fight Club. It's like, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> should we do it now? It's a lifetime thing. Just no, we should wrap this up. up. This is, yeah, <laughs> this is this perfect. Airport, hey, right? thank you guys. Yeah. For Bro, doing thank this. you guys. Thank you guys. One of my producers, one of our producers is getting really mad if I don't say, go subscribe to Out of yes. Order. Go watch a show. Yo, uh, for what? real, let me say, because you're terrible at talking about <laughs> yeah, yourself. Yeah. John and a couple guys at Barstool have a new sketch show called Out of Order. That I genuinely think is one of the oh, funniest fucking things the on the Zen internet, sketch? and I don't know, no. I don't know how this guy did it. All of a sudden, ten years in, he's like an Academy Award-winning actor. Really? Like he's it's he's acting really in these good. skits, and it's like 
where the fuck has this been for a decade, bro? <laughs> and and the guys editing it, our guy Pavs can make like movies. We got Owen and Sass who can write all this shit. Like all of a sudden they have one of the funniest fucking things on the internet. So we'll we'll do the podcast forever, but this is gonna be the money the maker. Out of order. Is so funny that I actually didn't know it was him at first. Really? Yeah, and I was like, I was like, wait. That can't be the same guy. It's like, jarring. It's, it's really like he he made a comment about Zins. What was the comment of? Do you ever? It's, it was like someone asked me what they were, and I was like, "You ever like want to feel really good but really bad at the same time, <laughs> and like really happy but really sad, and like really wired but also pretty nauseous, <laughs> and like super locked in but you need a nap." <laughs> <laughs> I got the product for you, <laughs> but, Zin. That's your new marketing campaign, right there. <laughs> well, congratulations on that. Dude, thank and you so much, thank thank you out. gentlemen. For congratulations down. to you guys. I yeah. mean, you thank conquer you. in the world. See you at Brandon brothers. and Stranded. Yeah. Or Stranded and Brandon. Stranded and Brandon, baby. Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.